So today I'm going to be using a new type of product I have gotten over this little winter break. Silicone parts A and B and the setting liquid. So today we're going to be doing something where I can just basically show you what silicone is. It also came with, um, it's called rubber glass where it looks like glass but like super bendable. It's super cool. You can probably buy it on like Amazon. Um, there's also pigments in here. So you have a brown pigment, black, a blood tone red, and this flesh color. So you can mix any of these colors together to get to your skin tone. However, I'm pale enough where even this can be like too dark for my skin tone. You can also just use silicone the way it comes. It comes clear. I have my usual um, effect stuff in this bucket. A bottle of blood. I don't have any more scab blood. I used it all in the last video. I just have some matte lipstick. Oh my gosh, I'm losing my voice. Some concealer and this uh, bronzer that's way too dark for my skin color, like way too dark. A couple brushes. This is just an angled brush, an angled thin brush that I like to use for some of this brown pigment that I use. Um, just like a blush brush for some bruising colors. A foundation brush. An angled brow brush that I don't use for my brows because I have an actual brow brush. And this, um, what are they called? It's like a blending brush. So we're gonna get right into this and I'm gonna do something on my arm. Like, I don't know where, probably on my wrist so that I can show you exactly how this works for first time users. From this pink bucket, I have only pulled out five items. I pulled out this CoverGirl Clean Professional um, setting powder. It's too dark even though it's literally in the lightest, wow, this is greasy. Um, even though it's in the lightest color, it's 105. Um, which is, it's just a loose setting powder. Pulled out this color workshop. It's just something I got like years ago that I used for doing bruises and stuff. Some dip brow um, liquid that's like too dark. Some black cream makeup and some more concealer. Just because this is the concealer I usually use on my face, this is just an extra one that I have specifically for this. So let's get into this. Okay, so to start with the silicone, this is silicone part A and then there's part B, and you mix it with this Thivex, which is kind of just like a final phase in it. I'll have to explain that farther. I have a little cup of fake glass shards. I don't know why it's not um, focusing on that. Oh well. They lo it looks like glass. It comes literally, it's called rubber glass. I already mentioned this. It's just rubber glass. It's literally rubber that breaks. And when it breaks the right way, it looks like a shard of glass. So let me just break that into a couple more pieces and put it into there. So what I'm gonna need is a popsicle stick, a mixing glass, or I keep a bunch of little shot glasses with me like all the time. This is at the wrong angle. Let me just put it there. A couple little shot glasses there, just four different colors, it's fine. This one's like a purpley magenta, blue, pink, green. So today, it doesn't matter um, if you use this or one of the little cups that it comes with. This is a kit that you can buy online um, or you can buy the silicone differently. Right now, I got this as a present. I've never used silicone before. This is not my first time using it because I have practiced with it. So what you're gonna do is you mix equal parts of part A and B. So you're gonna put them into this little shot glass. Just wanna make sure you guys can get like a good angle of this. So just however much you think you'll need, do that in half. So you don't really need a lot. It does go a long way. It takes about five minutes to dry, so that's it's definitely quicker than using liquid latex. I don't have to take out a bunch of different cuts and scenes, which is Great. We know how I feel about editing. And then you're going to do an equal part of B. Just give it a second to let it level itself out. That looks pretty equal. And then inside of that you're going to do a couple drops of the Thebex, which is just another solution. You're going to open it. It is a liquid, so it does pour 
quite fast. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You do however much you need. It just says a few drops. I usually do about um, six or seven, depending on the amount. And then you're just going to mix these together. It automatically becomes a gel. It is pretty much a liquid gel when it comes out of the bottle. Adding in the agent turns it into a full paste. I think I'm going to change the angle up on this a little bit. Okay, this is better. So you're just going to keep mixing this until you have a nice paste. In between these cuts, it's only been about 30 seconds. Sorry if you can hear my ferrets. Just the time it took me to move this around. So what you're going to do is you're going to take however much you want on your popsicle stick, wooden stick, and place it directly onto where you want it to go. So I decided that we're going to go for a glass shard in the wrist. At the end of this video, there will be photos of other looks that I've done with silicone. I have done one where I called it like a bar fight or something because it was on my face. I had glass shards in there. It was really good. It's really fun to make too. So what you want to do is because it is not liquid latex where you don't have to like go forever and build up and build up and build up, you want to make sure that your edges are smoothed down around the outside and that you have a nice thick center. Hopefully this is all on camera. You're just going to keep building up in that center area, making sure that the edges blend into your skin quite well. If they don't, I do believe that you can take out a little bit with rubbing alcohol and a Q-tip, but I wouldn't test it. Just try to do this all with the popsicle stick. You can touch it with your fingers, but it will stick to you more than it sticks to the popsicle stick. So I'm building out my area in the center, and what I'm going to do is now I'm going to wipe off a little bit on the edge of this cup and take some areas out with the Q-tip. Yeah, the Q-tip with the popsicle stick. So I'm just going to take out a couple of cut areas. You also don't need any plexiglass or rubber glass for this. You can just make animalistic cuts with the silicone. So now what I'm going to do is while it's still wet, I'm going to take some of the rubber glass and a little bit of the silicone and in those holes that I've just dug out I'm going to place some silicone back in not a lot just a little bit I'm trying to keep the areas obviously broken up and I'm gonna place some glass directly in there just like that some of this glass does have some um, blood tint on it Sorry, I'm like losing my voice. Um, so ignore that. It doesn't come like that. It does come completely clean. I did that while working on another person. And I pulled some of that back off so that I could use it again. You can make prosthetics doing this. Take it off yourself, powder the bottom, powder the top. Make sure none of it will stick to itself, and then save it for a different occasion, like Halloween, or if you're working at like a zombie run or something like that. You can always pull these pieces back out and use them again. So again, this will take about five minutes to set. We're already about three minutes since I started. So we're just gonna add some more glass you could do however much you want. The edges are a little bit tacky still, so it's going to take a little bit. Oops, I just pushed this a little bit over. And then we'll stick another, I don't want it that big. I want this little edge piece. Sometimes they're harder to use. Sorry, my ferrets are real noisy in the background. You just want to make sure you're sticking it straight in. Sometimes you have to hold it and wait for it to set. 
the bigger the pieces, the longer you'll have to hold it for. Um, but these, because of the way I have them, they're all sticking straight up. So I don't know if you can really see that that well. Let me pick this up. So, it kind of looks like I just have a bunch of shards of glass in my wrist right now, which is exactly what we're going for. So, there we go. Now I'm going to wait a few minutes for this to set, and I'll see you guys in the next cut. So, the time that we are starting to wait, it is New Year's, so it is 4.20, so in about four and a half minutes, I will take off, or excuse me, I won't take off, I will start adding some color and pigment to this look. It is 4.22, so it really hasn't been that long. It's been about two and a half minutes since that last cut, but I just wanted to show you how fast this stuff really does dry. So this is the area at the top, and it's already very tacky. There's really hardly any residue coming off my finger, so three more minutes seems like not that bad. So I actually ended up giving the silicone an extra four minutes, five minutes to um, set. So I just wanted to make sure that it wasn't super sticky because it is still a little bit sticky. I don't know if you guys can tell, but like I am kind of sticking to it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to use this little, you know, like nose powder. I'm just using this top of my hand for reference. So now it's not sticky at all. It's nice and powdered. You can barely tell it's there. It kind of just looks a little bit lumpy, a little bit dirty maybe. So I just want to make sure that you powder it so it's not sticky anymore. So we're going to do that exactly the same on this side gonna pour some into the cap. You want to be careful that you don't, if you are using this little um, rubber glass that you don't get any powder on the rubber glass, it will take away the shine that makes it look like glass. So you're just gonna very carefully go around it. Which is why I'm using this eyeshadow blending brush right now. Go in between the slots does help if you go around the outside as well just so you kind of get your bearings so you can see it kind of looks like it's just you know glass in my skin sometimes the like really HD photos you can kind of see the edges but in person you can barely tell I've got to figure out how to fix that for when it comes to like movie shoot and stuff. If you don't know, I have created a new Instagram page. I usually don't have my fans follow my Instagram just because I do like to have just a bit of privacy for me and my family. However, I've started a brand new page all for my FX stuff. I kind of got a little bit of powder on that piece right there. I gotta get right in between here. I just Maybe that's what I need, like a fan brush. Um, so my new Instagram page is sfxbecca, that's s-f-x-b-e-k-a-h, s-f-x-b-e-k-a-h, that's where I post all the little stuff that I've done, I'll probably also post updates on my YouTube channel, um, or about my YouTube channel on that page, so if you want updates about what I'm doing when I do this stuff, compared to when I actually post about it, you can definitely go check that out. Also, you can hit me up in my DMs, or I will probably put, start putting an email in the um, description box. If you want somebody to come do makeup for a movie or a Halloween party or anything along those lines, um, you can message me and ask if you give me um, a description about how many people or what you want it done for or for how long or what you're thinking of having me do, I can probably give you a rough estimate of the price um, that I will have you pay. Um, right now, it's pretty pretty low. If you asked me to do something like this, I'd probably tell you it was like $5-$10. Um, really not that bad. 
I'm pretty easy going when it comes to prices. So now we're going to open up this little palette. It's just a highlighter. It's way too pink to be a highlighter. It's like a light colored blush, a dark pink and a brown. So I'm going to start with the brown and just take it directly onto the silicone being kind of careful. You don't really want to go around the edges. You just want the area with the actual silicone to start having some, you know, irritated looking pigments. So but kind of be careful about that because if you go too far around the edges, I don't know if you can tell, it kind of looks a little like bumpy, which you can also just pass off as like bruising or something, but you know, just if you don't want to have to do that. And it will also be covered eventually with pink and some blood, but just in the process it looks a little wonky. So just taking some more brown. It is a lot easier. What I've noticed it's a lot easier to color um, silicone than it is to color liquid latex. So if you are a beginner or you want to do something simple like doing some cuts in the skin, I would recommend silicone instead of liquid latex. Um, liquid latex or any other product that you're putting on your skin, you really want to make sure, including this, you want to make sure that you're not allergic to it by doing a little patch test on the top of your hand like that, except that's just for me to know when it's dry. So you want to really make sure that you're okay with what you're doing. So there's some brown pigment on there. Let's see if I can a better angle. So now it's looking a little bit brown and a little bit bruised. So then let's go into the next. Now we're going to do the exact same thing we just did with all that brown, except we're going to go in kind of heavy with this dark pink. Any sort of blush or even like a red will do. This is just going to give it kind of the irritated look. This is kind of like a weird place to put it because you see if I do that, then the, the silicone kind of bunches up there. But it doesn't really peel off, which is a little bit better than the liquid latex. So props to silicone parts A and B for I think probably becoming my new favorite thing. I really am a fan of liquid latex, but I think it works better if you're trying to do like, um, like uh, you just ran your face through the asphalt or like um, I know burns are really good with it because you can very easily pluck out some spaces, but I do think that for cuts. I'm gonna have to say that silicone has probably become my new favorite. So you also want to go around the area kind of roughly with this pink. You don't want it to just be on the silicone. So I'm also gonna go in with some brown just to add some irritation. Just very roughly coloring it. There doesn't have to be any sort of specific color patterns. Just go with what you think looks right. I'm gonna cut this scene, take a photo, and insert the photo in between the next scene. Next, I'm going to close up this palette, kind of wipe off this brush a little bit, and pull out this brow gel. So what I'm going to do with it, first, I'm going to take the brow angled brush and gently gently tap it in because this is very highly pigmented you can see the tip of this brush is already pretty much black and I'm going to go in around where the glass is and follow through through the cuts so kind of just adding depths where I made those divots like so Keep going until every single piece of glass is covered like that. So I'm just going to lay my hand down and do this the way I would normally do that. I think I can probably switch angles again. just want to make sure I don't drop my camera. There we go. This just might make it a little bit easier.
you want to make sure that you are connecting your lines. You don't want anything to be too far apart. So I always have people asking me what kind of got me into this. I really don't know. One day I went to the store and it wasn't just like, it was an art supply store. I picked up some clay for like pottery and for some reason I put it on the back of my hand and that was the first time I ever made SFX arts. I had fake blood, I had literally just another bottle of that and I decided that that's what I was going to do with it. I had made a little like clay pot and I was like, huh, you know what else this would be cool with? I don't really know how I got so fucked up that this is what I enjoy doing. Um, but it is, and I love it. It's really, truly fun. If you're ever thinking of doing it, um, and you think it's too hard, it can be. It depends. You don't get good by doing it once. You have to do it a couple of times to really start getting to know how to use things when you know, when it's ready to be photo photographed, how you make things look a certain way. Um, it's, it's hard. It really is like a piece of art. I am an artist as well. I do a lot of art. Um, you have to just kind of know when it's time. So everything is now outlined. So wipe off my little angled brush real quick. So what I'm going to do now Actually, I'm going to take another one of these little shot glasses. The other one got thrown away. Take a little bit of this brow dip and put it onto the side of this cut. I'm using that because if I'm going to add, you don't just want to do these. You want to do like little cuts along your arm, kind of blending stuff in just so it's not so rough edged. I'm just going to pull away some of these edges a little bit. That's what I mean. It's a little bit rough around the edges. You want to blend that in with a little bit of cuts and stuff. You don't want everything to look so perfect because it won't look perfect. It'll look bloody. It'll look gross. So what I'm going to do now, just take a little bit of blood on this brush. And by a little bit, I mean I'm literally dipping the entire length of the brush in. Rub it into this brown area. And then pull away. So now I'm getting blood and pigment. I need a little bit more blood, a little less pigment. And that's probably a little bit too less pigment. You kind of just pull the cuts along your actual arm, along the edges. You don't want it to look perfect. It's supposed to look wrong. It's supposed to look messy. Nothing in SFX makeup is ever supposed to look perfect unless you're doing like a mermaid or something. Sorry, it is New Year's. My parents are home early talking about getting groceries. Uh, I need to get groceries, so that's fun. I'll have to do that later. So now I've added a bunch of cuts along my arm. Some of them you can kind of go a little sideways, like just a little bit different. You don't want everything to look perfect. I don't know how many times I have to reiterate that for people to understand that nothing in this business, I guess, is ever supposed to look perfect. Ever. If it looks perfect, you did probably something wrong. It's supposed to look good, but it's not supposed to look perfect at all. So I'm just going to dip this angled brush into my fake blood and bring it everywhere I put that brown. What this does is it turns the, these brown lines into open wounds. So I'm just going to kind of heavily, well not heavily, I mean this is a really tiny brush, but I'm kind of like dipping the whole thing in. And placing it everywhere. Not that much. Right there. One here. You do kind of want to let it naturally flow. 
So think about if you had shards of glass in your arms, you'd probably try to hold your wrist or kind of like bend it like this or something. You want to think about how you would compose yourself in this situation. So now I'm just adding more blood. Those are going around the edges like so. That will come back to you as soon as the blood is done.